Are you ready to become awesomer? Hello everyone, this is Umar Hamid, your host, and welcome to the No Limit Selling Podcast, where industry leaders share their tips, strategies, and advice on how to make you better, stronger, faster. Get ready for another episode. I'm privileged to have Arsham Mirsha, the co-founder of Web Mechanics. Arsham, welcome to the program. Happy to be here. My... So Arsham, we, we've known each other for a while. Sure. Let the audience know who you are, what you do, and uh, why you started Web Mechanics. Okay. So uh, I'm Arsham Mirsha. I am co-founder of Web Mechanics here. Uh, Chris Mechanics, my partner. Uh, we are a digital marketing agency. Uh, we're a performance-based digital marketing agency. So, and uh, you know, we help clients uh, leverage the web and things like Google and Facebook to get more leads and make more sales. Ultimately, we like to say uh, our job is to make the phones ring and cash registers ding. A little fun jingle for you there. That's uh, ultimately what we're here to do, Isn't and <laughs> that is such a hard trick to do because I have braved the, wor- uh, the world of Facebook and Google Ads and LinkedIn with really, really bad results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, hey, I mean, uh, their job is to, they make money off those ads, right? So their job is to is to get your money, but but listen, it's, it's always changing, and uh, I think creative is a big, is a big, uh, part of that so there's a lot of factors in more you can't you know don't get discouraged man i'll yeah. help you <laughs> thank you <laughs> it's a changing world and yes. there's lots of agencies out there and you guys do better than uh, than most we like to think so everybody would tell a really good story yeah so how do you guys uh, walk your talk Interesting. How do we walk our talk? What do you mean by that? So you're talking to people saying, hey, we're going to be the agency that's going to help you make the phones ring and the, cash cash registers, registers. the cash registers ding. Yeah. Other people are saying the same thing and they sound really good, How but you have to walk your talk. And you said you're a performance-based organization. Yeah. How do you perform? That's, that's interesting. So, you know, we have some clients who actually, uh, you know, we're paid on performance. So if we, you know, hit a certain cost per sale, or if we hit a certain um, cost per acquisition, we get, you know, you can call it a commission, right? You know, no limit selling, right? So call it a commission. So that's how one way that we walk our talk. Uh, I think another way is that we we actually won't take clients on if we don't think that we can make a difference, make a difference, or drive the results that they want, or in the time frame that they want. You know, there's been plenty of things that come at us, and it's like, hey, here's our timeline. We got to hit this, you know, and we're just like, we just can't do that, so we're not gonna take it on. I don't know. Brilliant. So, how many people in the company right now? Uh, Forty and some change. So, uh, did you see yourself being a manager that's managing department heads <laughs> and all those people? Uh, what was that transition like from being uh, starting in a basement? Yeah to having a company yeah um well luck <laughs> luckily it didn't happen overnight you know our growth has been pretty steady um and i'm grateful for that because had it been any faster it would be you know even what you hear gro- growing pains right oh yeah you can get implosions happen yeah i mean i think that's you know one of the ways you see cl- uh companies die they grow too fast right things spiral out of control what have you but i will tell you that's a good question umar because i was always the the technical guy and you know, between Chris and I, right? He's he's more of the art, the creative, uh, the sales, and I'm like the uh, development, the operations, the the numbers guy, right? right. Yeah, I mean, I could say that it, it's been a challenge to uh, transition from that to you know a leader and a manager. Luckily, I've had you know ten years to do it, so a lot of a lot of books, <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of practice, a lot of practice. How do you unite the team? Because you know. You have people that are uh, are young, interested in different things. You guys are a little bit older, not that old. But <laughs> how do you get people from different walks of life to come together, kind of go in the same direction? All right, a couple things on that. So number one is values. You know, when we're hiring, we're looking at values. Skills as well, but values. So give me an example of what values speak to you. Like, what are you looking for? So we like ambitious people. If they don't have a lot of experience but they're hungry and you give them because the interview process isn't one day so we meet them and we say okay you know here's an assignment try this out for us and then they'll say 
and then they'll go figure it out. And you can tell the people who put their heart and soul into it. You can tell the people who went and Googled around and learned. See, I've had people say, hey, I didn't know how to approach this problem, so I Googled, here are the resources I've u- I used, and here's my answer. I'm like, wow, okay, like this They're person, showing you the work. That's yeah, pretty amazing. Yeah, they showed me the work, right? They didn't just show me the answer. They showed me how they got to the work, so they showed their math. You know, that's, a, that's an example of, a, you know, someone who's going to be a hard worker, someone who's going to be you know, interested in learning. I, I was talking to the CEO there in the programming space. Okay. And he says, you know, we get uh, managers coming in. Yeah. We vet them through the resume process first. So we mm-hmm. know people have the talent. Sure. And they come in. First thing they do is they actually get them to do live coding in front of them. Well, yeah, it's a yeah, problem. Perfect. Love and that. And then we get them to kind of talk about, you know, how they led their teams in the past. And what the guy's looking for is this. He has a notebook. And every time the person uses the word I, I wow. he puts a check. And every time he, we, and if the we's don't like double or triple the eyes, uh-huh. they're not going to hire them. Wow. And I, I love thought that. that's such a simple, elegant way to, it is. to figure out if they're team focused it or is. ego focused. It is. That's so good. I like that. I'm going to use that now. That's Because <laughs> you, you pay attention to small things like that and, and, and it, uh, it, can, it, can, it can tell you. Because I think it is, it's totally a we game, right? We can't, there's no way Chris and I could be making the impact or web mechanics could be making the impact if it was just me and Chris. It's, right. it's totally we game. I mean, and and I, f- I forget what your question was, but we're going to go back to that. How do you get right. the team to come together? You said values. You sort for values when they come in, yep. and then what? I think constant communication of of the goals, mm-hmm. the goals that let's call it the top, right? What are Chris and I's goals, and how does that permeate through the organization? How does that then become a departmental goal? How does that then become a um, an individual's goal. So, so you're the process guy, right? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Well, well done. My man, reading right into it, right? So, and and uh, so constant communication and uh, transparency, right? We hold uh, quarterly all-hands meetings where, you know, it's it's me and Chris talking about what we focused on last quarter, what we're going to focus on this quarter. We have town halls, and they can just ask me anything, ask us anything. And, you know, that's transparency and candor. It's one of our So give me an example of, of somebody that you've got in the past in the company. Don't name names unless mm-hmm. you want to. Sure. Yeah. Somebody that uh, was valuable to the company mm-hmm. but was not performing at the level you wanted. How did you nurture them, guide them, coach them mm-hmm. to right size? You know, we all fall into slumps yeah. and sometimes get distracted. Yeah. Do you have an example of one of those? Because you um, know, that's leadership. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a, like a good example. I, I can think of – so I have multiple examples where it's a personal issue. It's something that is happening in their home life right. that you know comes to work. Again, it's, it's that constant communication, talking to them, hey, what's going on, you know, and telling them, telling them up front, like, you know, your performance is lacking. When you have this negative behavior, this negative consequence happens, and here's what I will, here's the behavior I want, you know, and, and what I mean, then they, they come out and they tell you, hey, I'm having trouble. I've spouse been late because, yeah, spouse or whatever. I think, like, just being there for them and just having, like, I've had people vent. I'm sure you've seen this. So they just come and they, they'll be like, hey, man, I just need to vent. You know, I'm having this trouble, this, whatever. I've helped uh, people with their personal finances. One example of how to coach them through, I don't, I can't think of one off the top of okay, my head. But, but it's a general yeah. kind of mindset. Yeah. So mindset, mindset is important. So it is mindset. When you think about building an organization, kind of what's the lens you look at it through? Mm-hmm. Like what's your mindset? Yeah, definitely uh, optimistic, <laughs> if it, as it were. You know, we like to focus on the best possible outcome. You know, it's easy to, to fall into a slump or to, to think about the worst possible outcome. Everyone wants to mitigate their risk. Right. Um, but I think, you know, and this takes a lot of practice, Umar, I think you know that, to recognize those thoughts that, hey, this is a, this is a thought that's not serving me, right. so I'm going to switch it to one that will serve me. I think Chris and I are very good at that. Well, I like to think so, and we're still practicing. But we also teach our team that. You know, it's in, it's in our values, it's in our oath, and... Uh, so yeah, that in our oath. Us. Yeah, we have in our oath. I like that uh, nice mirror there. In our oath, <laughs> elaborate. So we have uh, um, we have our core values, and right. then from those derive an oath that everyone takes. It's basically just you know a series of statements like I dare to dream big. Uh, I practice transparency and candor. I cultivate positive and passionate energy. There's one for your nice. mindset. You know, I'm a money magnet is another one, and I honor my words with action. And everyone says it. It's it's kind of a it's a cultural thing. It's a culture builder. So one of the things that I get not that mindset sure, right. Yeah, you know? I'm not sure if you're doing this. You might be, but uh, take one of those oaths 
Mm -hmm. And when you catch an employee doing it, capture that story, yes. and that becomes the folklore. Yes. Because when somebody comes into the company new and they go, these are our oaths, and it's like, sounds like bullshit. Yep. But if you say, well, let me tell you about this oath. Mm -hmm. You know, two weeks ago, we had an employee that did this, and this was the impact it had. Yeah. And it becomes real and meaningful, and you get the spirit of the law as opposed story, to just the, yeah. the facts. Because, you know, people have hold beliefs, yes. and then they, they look for things that support that belief. Right. That's that's what the human mind does. We have. So, for instance, we have a, we use Slack. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a Slack channel called Wind Stories. Right. Right. And so, you know, typically what's in there is, is our client wind stories is when we, you know, move the needle for a client or a client says something nice or make an impact on bottom line. But you also see things in there. It's like, you know, where a client or a partner or vendor like says something like, hey, you're you're so I really thank you for being so responsive and upfront or whatever. And so we share those wind stories in that channel. Oh, brilliant. And then what what I do or what Chris does or what our managers will do, they'll go in there and be like, fantastic, legendary service or way to dream big with that goal. Right. So oh, we're reinforce it. Reinforce brilliant. it. Yeah. Repeat it. Reinforce it. Uh, we actually. I'm going to give credit to Mr. Chip Lewis for that one. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, we asked him, how do you, a long time ago, we asked him, how do you reinforce your core values? He's like, I just walk around the office, like beating the drum, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. I remember him saying something to that. Right. You know, and, and uh, it works. You and Chris both are hungry for learning. Yes. And you've had a lot of mentors and coaches. Yes. Tell me about some of the advice you've gotten that you use today that uh, makes web mechanics stronger? Oh, wow, that's good. Okay, um, I think patience is a good one. Mm -hmm. um, I can recall back to when we started, we thought we were gonna be billionaires overnight, you know? Right. Not necessarily, I and mean, that wasn't like the, you know, but so patience, I'd say, was, uh, was good advice. Um, I think other advice, like the Chip Lewis, for example, you have to care about your people. Right. Or not care about your people, but that's not maybe not the best way of putting it. But I think you can get a lot more done through people. You know, yes. when you give them, hey, Daniel Pink, we'll give him a shout out, right? So give them autonomy, and a chance for mastery and purpose. Then you find people, perf you know, per their performance goes up because they enjoy what they do. I think that, that's some good advice <laughs> there. My definition of being a leader yes. is there's three things that you have to focus on. Yeah. One is a compelling, strategically sound, kick-ass vision okay. that inspires people to say, you know what, that's a journey worth taking. I like it. Second one is the culture, and that we've been talking about that. How yeah. do you develop a culture where people live it, breathe it, and it just becomes a part of the norm? Right. So when you get a new employee coming in, they just align with what's going on because right. it's that's what's happening, and that's a hard thing to do. Yep. And then the third one is long-term shareholder value. How do we increase that? Mm -hmm. Sounds like, uh, you know, with your oath and where you're heading, you've got the vision part really well defined. Yeah. You're doing things to build up the culture within your team. Sure. Of course, you're growing and profitable. Mm. But the question I have for you is this. You guys are getting a level of education and leadership not only from people you hang out with, mm -hmm. but actually doing, which sure. fosters Practicing, it. Sure, practicing, yeah. How do you bring leadership down to the next middle level management Brilliant. in your company? Man, that's that's a really good question and I can tell you it's it's not <laughs> that's the million dollar question, that's right? That's the hardest right? thing. Because because that's scaling, right? We can't be the leaders of everyone forever. And in larger companies where the lawsuits come from is that, not upper management, right. it's middle management. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So I can think of a couple ways that we do it here. One of which is back to that constant communication, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you, we do formal reviews. Those happen two times a year. And then from those are derived goals for, for those six months. So right. each individual has goals. Those align you know, to the department, to the, to the company. And so for that middle manager, their goals are leadership and management related. You know, read this book or challenge this person to have this goal and help them achieve it. Achieve it, And then so we do reviews two times a year and then we do uh, monthly check-ins on those. We call them recurring accountability meetings. Nice, individually or as a group? Individually, individually. So that's the um, manager with their direct report. Right. Right, so they do that and they're, what they do is they're focusing on the goals that came out of the reviews. And then one other thing I'll say on developing that middle management layer, uh, as it were, we buy training. You know, we buy 
leadership training, management training off the shelf. We go through it. Nice. We go through it as together as a team, me, Chris, and you know, the next layer. And then and we discuss, hey, is that relevant to us? How so? What are we gonna change as a result? And then uh, we haven't done this yet, but the next layer is about to go go through it as well. Nice. So, you know, it's we're all hearing the same thing, perpetuating it down the organization. Another definition of leadership a la Umar is uh, <laughs> Umar. how do we get our people that we're leading to see further out, mm-hmm. number one, and number two, how do we get them to suspend their fear and go on the journey believing that it's going to work out well? I like that. Not always an easy thing to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I forget the guy's work. He was basically talking about if you take a look at CEOs of larger companies, one of the gifts that they have is they have the ability to see five seven years out Mm -hmm. and when you go down the ranks to vps they generally have a three-year outlook just the capacity to have that outlook yeah yeah and when you go down further down when you get down to the frontline people that are punching the clock sometimes they have difficulty seeing friday (laughs) as they're going day to day is their time horizon so part of leadership is how do we get people to kind of see further out all right it is it is. You know, I, I don't know if I have the silver bullet, but uh, I know that, you know, one thing that's helped with my direct reports, kind of the quote unquote layer uh, is beneath me and Chris would be we have a strategic plan. And on that, we have a 10 year vision. Right. And I can tell you, Mar, that's not fleshed out with all the details. Right. Because, nor should it be. Nor should it be. Then we have a three year. We skip from 10. We go down to three. Three year again, not super fleshed out, but more so than the ten year. And then at that layer, you know, we're we're layering, we're talking about what our sales and marketing looks like, what our team looks like, what our delivery team looks like, right? And then that then breaks down into yearly goals. So using, and then those yearly goals break down to quarterly goals. I'm the process guy, remember? Right. right. I think that helps show again, like alignment. We call it alignment at the top. So that's to say to people, it's to align at, at, at the top. That's, I mean, I don't, I can't, sense. I don't yeah. need to, you know, <laughs> color it anymore, I don't think. And, and I know that's helped. I know that's helped because you know how I know, Umar, I'll tell you, because w- we'll come, we'll come, Chris and I will come with an idea. Or whatever, you know, we'll come with an idea of like, hey, we should be doing this. And then one of my managers will say to me, well, how does that align to the three year goal? I and don't see like, that. Up. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You know, mm. that, that's happened. It's happened. It's, and, it, and it continues to happen. And now I'm happy about that. You know, that, that's have, that support, you know, it's like, Hey, focus, man. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So you're on a path to get better as you go. Trying to. So what is your biggest fear ah. as a leader with 40 people counting on you to do yeah. what you do? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. All the clients firing at me all at one time, right? Uh, that's a big fear always. I don't know. I don't, I don't, sometimes it can feel like a house of cards. One thing, you know, one bad thing happens and then maybe it, you focus on that and then think of it like spinning plates. All right. You're holding all these spinning plates. Right. One falls. Hey, you know, you still got these other spinning plates. So you got to hold don't them up. Don't get distracted. Don't get yeah. distracted, you know? So, and you know, I think we've been lucky. We've never had anything bad like that. I don't, I can't, I think the biggest fear is 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 you know going for going for something big and and failing, you know. Let's take a different avenue. Sure. You have a spinoff. Mm-hmm. Another company they guys uh, uh, started. Mm-hmm. You got people running it. Yep. What's the name of that company? Out, it was formerly Outbound Ops. Now they're OBO. 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 So OBO, they have their own culture mm-hmm. and their own vision. Yep. What's that like? Oh. Because you want them to do well. Yes. You want to have either totally hands off or a gentle hand on the tiller. Very gentle. So how yes. do you how do you balance that? Because they might make different decisions than you. Yeah. Their values may align, may not. So mm-hmm. what's that experience like? That's a very good question. Where Chris are we're involved at call it the highest level, right? We're like you know, on the board. Actually, yeah, technically we're on the board, right? And so we're not obviously concerned with the day-to-day decisions. Um, we want to make sure that they, they get the support from us. They ask us for our advice and they, they tell us what's going on. And a lot of times I'm just congr- congratulating them. The leaders of that organization are, you know, Noah Burke and Rob Gwen. They are... Noah's been on the podcast uh, before. Oh, brilliant. There you have it. Yeah, very good. And he uh, recommended you, by the way. I bet he, he did. Said, Do you think uh, Chris is smart? Harsham's smarter. <laughs> That's very nice. I, I love Noah. Noah's a good guy. And and I, you know, the same goes to him. He's, he's brilliant at what he does. And now he's got fantastic support in Rob and in his team. To go back to the question, you know, what it's like, it's, 
it's you know we're at the very highest level, right? So we're we're talking about strategic direction, you know, what products and services they're selling into who, like their audience, their unique differentiators, and we're talking financials. That's basically it. I mean, I, I'd say Chris and I are very very lightly involved. We're here to help them. I myself, you know, this is no limit selling. I'm I'm a I'm a salesperson for them. When I go out networking, yeah, I'm thinking about web mechanics, I'm thinking about OBO as well. You know, trying to help them help them grow. And it's awesome what they're doing. They're doing very similar to what we're doing here, just building a strong organization that creates jobs and makes a big impact on clients bottom line. It's awesome. Brilliant. So before we part company, is there, if there was a, somebody either starting out in business yes. or somebody that's gone from single person to five employees, mm-hmm. let's say that person, mm-hmm. what three pieces of advice would you give them having a small team and growing to mm-hmm. make sure they don't lose their way? Okay. Number one, I'd say is have a, get a right hand man or woman, even better. Someone to share some of the burden for you. A second in command, right. as it were, right? I think that has been like very valuable for Chris and I. We're kind of, you know, the each yin- other's. <laughs> exactly. No, seriously. And then the yin and the yang, Noah and Rob at OBO have that as well. Nice. And then even here within our org, the way we're, we have like structured in pods, every leader of each pod has their own uh, second. second in command. I think that's, you know, the numero uno. Uh, advice there and then that's with, funny the number one thing is have a second I guess, yeah yeah exactly I like, I like way to find the, the irony yes exactly and uh and you know you you work with that person to define your swim lanes and, and define how your relationship is gonna you know work and I think you know for that one person now managing five people they'll find hopefully the idea is a burden lifted right it's like I don't have to worry about that anymore because I know you got that covered brilliant and they can go and focus so I, you know, two and three would probably be plan and prepare so you know what's coming up. So prepare for that. It's always, you know, preparation goes a very long way. Uh, and then read. The number one trait of successful people is learning all the it's time. It's learning, yeah. And it's not just, I think uh, Chris did a good post on this because we talked about it. It's like, don't just read for the sake of reading, right? Like if you're now find yourself becoming a manager or a leader, find the read books. In that that, yeah, read in that space, you know, so... Yeah. So if you need to change your delivery team from just, you know, ad hoc to, to uh, an agile scrum model, you're going to read in that space. You know what I mean? Like, is there any question I should have asked you that I did not that you'd like to share with the world? Oh, man. I, I know part of your audience is, you know, maybe salespeople and yep. such. But obviously then you have that's not all of the audience, right? There's other this leaders. Uh, there it is. It, it runs the gamut. People so, can't sleep at night. <laughs> they want to yeah, right. fall. We just want to fall asleep. They just want to listen <laughs> to us babble. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I can't think of a question, but I thought of something that's kind of funny, like no limit selling. I think everything's a sale. You know, yes. everything's a sale. So for us, if we're delivering a piece of creative to a client, that's kind of a sale, right? If we're late on a deliverable, that's a sale. You Your know what kids I mean? knowing which parent to go to and how to pitch it to isn't, get what they want. Isn't that a it's sale? Ultimate sale. That's the ultimate sale, right? Or hey, honey, I'm going to be late from work. You know, coming over. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a sale? Like ultimately. So, and then I think you uh, you said something like, how do you get your you know team to align? And you know, that's a sale Leadership too. Leadership is a sale. Yeah. Leadership is a sale. It really is. So I think involving people and being upfront and and uh, and truthful goes a very very long way. I think people appreciate it. They see it more and more. People can see through the the BS. So you might as well just go with the truth. Words to live by. There you go. Thanks so much for sitting down with me. My pleasure. Always a pleasure. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and leave a five star rating. And if you're looking for more tools, go to my website at nolimitselling.com. I've got a free mind training course there that's going to teach you some insights from the world of neuro-linguistic programming, and that is the fastest way to get better results. 